Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Adobe Illustrator Tutorials. In this one, we're going to talk about the Shape Builder tool. In the previous episode, we talked about the Pathfinder tool and how you can use the Pathfinder tool to create complex shapes from some basic shapes. The Shape Builder tool is very similar in that, except you have a little bit more control on what you can and can't add or what you can and can't subtract. So it's a really nice tool that gives you a little bit more control as an artist. Really when it comes down to it, it's up to you to choose whether you want to use the Shape Builder tool or the Pathfinder tool for your design because they both kind of do the same thing. One I think just has a little bit more control to it and allows you to make more complex objects from that. So let's jump into the tutorial here and see how to use the Shape Builder tool. So the last session we talked about the Pathfinder workspace panel and we talked about shape modes and Pathfinder modes and how you can create complex shapes with basic geometric shapes. And we're going to kind of build off that a little bit and we're going to use some basic geometric shapes, the rectangle, the ellipse and our polygons and stars. But then we're going to talk about the shape builder tool. Uh, what I showed you with the Pathfinder tool was just two shapes. When you start to add multiple shapes, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But with the shape builder tool, you can use 10, 15 different shapes all overlapped and create one really complex shape with them. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that today here. So we'll start with something basic. I'm going to use the rectangle tool. And let's say we want to make the top of a castle. So have you ever seen like those old castles, how they've got the bricks that kind of come up and down, the little gaps there for the archers to kind of shoot out of. So we'll make something just kind of simple like that. So I'm going to make a long rectangle. And go ahead and I'm going to fill it with magenta so you guys can see it. And I'm going to make a series of vertical rectangles. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to control C to copy it and then control V to paste it. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm doing all my controls based on Windows and not Mac. So if you have a Mac, I apologize for that. Um, but usually the option key does that as well to help with these out. So I'm going to do the same thing, command V or option V and Mac, keep doing that, pasting it. And I'm pasting these shapes, kind of spreading them out a little bit. You might look at this and be like, oh, it doesn't really look like, you know, a castle yet, which is true. It doesn't really look like a castle quite yet. I'm just going to adjust these a little bit. All right, so let's say I select all these and you can see now I've got this one large rectangle and all these other ones kind of sticking in. So I want to make this shape right here, this kind of castle top shape. Now, if I were to use uh, the Pathfinder tool, because there's so many shapes, it would get confused and there's a lot of other little steps you have to do. You have to group them, make them uh, like, a, like a collective object, make all those shapes one object and then you can do it but you can use the shape builder tool very quickly to just kind of create the shape that you want. So over here in my toolbar, there is this little option here. It's the little circle and the big circle and the arrow. That is your shape builder tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Also, just another little tip. If you hover over these tools, you'll see how it says shift plus M in parentheses. Those are the shortcuts for the different tools. So if I go to the rectangle tool, you can see that M is the shortcut. So once you start getting used to Illustrator and using it a lot more, and there's certain tools you use a lot, it's really valuable to you to speed up your workflow time to learn what those shortcut keys are. So that way you can just click it on the keyboard and jump to the tools that you want rather than trying to go over to the tool panel and figure that out. So I'll try to say those in the tutorial so you kind of get used to hearing them, but it's good to kind of know you hover over things, you can see what those shortcuts are, A, for the direct selection tool, uh, just to kind of help you out in the long run. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create our little shape using the Shape Builder tool. So the first thing you have to do is you have to select all of the shapes that you want to use to help make that. So right now I want to use, select all these little rectangles and this large one. So I'm going to click and drag to select all of those shapes. Okay, so I've got these shapes selected. I'm going to click on the Shape Builder tool. And you'll see my cursor changes to a black arrow with a plus sign. What that's saying is, I'm going to add these shapes together to make a new shape. So when I hover over this shape, you see how that changes to like this kind of grayed out image? What it's saying is if I click here right now, I'm going to 
create that shape. And what I've done is I've made one shape now that looks like this. Okay. So I could stop right here and I can click on my selection tool and pull that away and I would have that shape. But I would also have all of these little shapes. So there's a quick way to get rid of those. If I hold down my alt key on the keyboard, do you see how that goes from a plus sign to a minus sign? Now when I drag over, it's actually going to cut out those shapes. Click and drag. So now, and you can see over here, my layers panel, how those shapes are actually disappearing. So I can do that work ahead of time. Now I have my little castle top shape. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z and go back to where I was just so you can see what I'm talking about. So if I had this shape, use my shape builder tool and I click on that. And now I click on my selection tool. I can pull this away and I have that shape, right? But I've got all these here. So I could just select them all and delete and be done with it. Same thing happens. But I wanted to show you how you can subtract that because that's really important, especially when you get into more complex objects and you want to delete some things out. It makes it a little bit easier. I want to cut this little shape out. So that's how you would do that. So let's see. Um, I'm going to try my ellipse tool here. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to make kind of an ellipse shape. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to make a perfect circle. I hit V. Go to my selection tool. Control C, Control V to paste that. And I'm going to kind of overlap them a little bit. And I'm going to select them both. Go to my Shape Builder tool. Shift and M is the shortcut for that. And then I'm going to click in this middle part here. So I'm going to make that. Hold down the Alt button. Delete that. Delete that. Go to my Selection tool. And now I have this cool leaf shape. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And what I want to do now is... I want to create little like divots that are cut out of that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hit L that is the ellipse tool shortcut. And I'm going to create some ellipse shape here. And I'm going to create another one right here. Now I'm having trouble seeing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch these to all magenta outlines. And I'm going to take my fill color and click that so I can see a little bit better what I have here. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm looking at this little shape right here. So I want to have a leaf that comes in and comes down and comes up, right? So I want to have that little shape. So I like that little divot. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select these two shapes. Actually, I'm going to click, hold down shift and click. And I'm going to, here's another little shortcut. So when you want to duplicate things quickly, if you hold down the Alt key, you'll notice that my cursor changes from a black arrow to a black and white over the top. That's a duplicating feature. So now when I hold down the Alt key and I click and drag, I'm actually duplicating those two rings. I'm going to do that again. And what I'm looking at is this shape right here. And I'm going to do that one more time over here. Now my curve is changing, so I'm going to have to adjust these circles, but that was just a quick way for me to kind of create some shapes, take those and copy those a little bit. So now what I want to do is that looks a lot more complex using the pathfinder tool would not work for this. Okay. But I want to create some divots in my leaf and some of them are kind of overlapped here. So I'm going to go through a little bit slower. Okay. So I'm going to click, it's like this one, this shape, and my big leaf. Shift M for my shape builder tool. I'm gonna hold down the Alt button because I wanna cut out this part and cut out this part. Now, you'll see I've still got this ring in here and all this, right? So I can just have the plus sign there. I'm gonna click and drag over those shapes and now it brings it together. So you can actually click and draw. See how these little dotted line? It's telling you, here's the path that I'm making. and Everything that falls in this path is going to be grouped together. Okay, But notice it's not using these circles because I didn't select those for the shape builder process. So now I can focus on just those little shapes. So I'm going to hit V for my selection tool. And now I'm going to select this one. See ellipse here. Hold down my shift button, select this one, and then select my big shape. 
And again, same thing, Shift M for my Shape Builder tool. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key to switch to minus or subtract it. I'm gonna get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of that little divot. And then I'm going to add these shapes here. Oh, you can see I've got that here. So I wanna add that in. So now I've got that cool little piece here, right? And I'm gonna keep repeating this process. Now I've got this really cool leaf shape and you see, I just moved it. I had this little piece left over here from that earlier one. So I can just kind of get rid of that. So you got a cool leaf shape or this could be a cool feather. So you can see with a shape builder tool, you can make way more complex shapes. But again, all I did was two perfect circles to start with this shape and then a series of ellipses to create little divots. And I used the shape builder tool to cut them out. So that's a great way to use the shape, use geometric shapes and the shape builder tool to create more complex designs.